Well, I'd like to tell you a bit about what we do in our reality centre, what kinds of things we're trying to research and therefore what, what methods um, we're, we're developing. Um, and in the centre, I think that we think the kind of worlds that people live in, the everyday worlds people inhabit, are quite complex. Um, the way they experience them is often messy and complicated. Um, it's not straightforward. Uh, and also, it's sort of lived on a number of dimensions. So people's everyday, ordinary lives are, are multidimensional, so they involve... Um, interactions with things and objects as well as with people they involve um, sensory dimensions and and all of these kinds of th all of these kinds of things um, so we think that the kinds of methods we should use should try to fit that reality really rather than trying to bend reality into standardized methods or methods which somehow don't take a kid don't get close I suppose to, to that reality so we use a range of methods um, and I think we're there, there are sort of pragmatic reasons for those as well as sort of intellectual reasons so we try to adopt an investigative approach and think well if we want to find out about this what are all the ways we can do that how can we approach that from from different angles so that involves thinking quite creatively I think and investigatively about about how we research um, and then the methods that we use um, range from um, the, the mostly qualitative methods or qualitative and mixed methods. Um, so we use, for example, what we call creative interviewing, which is essentially uh, qualitative interviewing. But I suppose we call it creative because the idea is that there isn't a structure, there isn't a formal structure, that you will, uh, you will approach a list of themes and topics um, with people in any order and tailor that to the kind of sequence that makes sense to that person but you'll also do creative things within that so you might look at photographs you might be outside you might go for a walk um, you might uh, make something you might do some drawing or, or whatever so a whole range of, of things that you might do and seeing this as a, as, as a kind of interaction where um, knowledge and data are created I suppose in, in, in that process so I think that's why we want to call it creative interviewing rather than just uh, qualitative interviewing. We also like to experiment a bit with methods, so we've used um, a range of uh, experimental methods, mostly not in the formal sense of an experiment, um, but, tr but trying to create a situation where you can introduce a, a stimulus to a group, for example, perhaps in a focus group, introduce something that people could do or react to and see what happens and observe what happens. We also uh, use uh, visual methods. Um, so one of the things that you can do um, is visual elicitation or photo elicitation, for example. So you can work with people and ask them to show you their family photographs, perhaps. The point of doing that is to um, well, it's partly to kindle their memories, but also their imaginations and to get them sort of thinking around tangible and intangible dimensions of, of, of their lives and, and their memories and their relationships. We're particularly interested in relationships and relationality and how people relate to each other. You can give people cameras and ask them to take pictures of people who are important to them or uh, in one project we've used cameras with children and asked them to take photographs that remind them of important relationships and that's very interesting because often what they take pictures of isn't people actually it's often animals um, or uh, environments it's places so it's it's Part, uh, you know, sort of locations in people's houses or it might be somewhere in their neighbourhood and so on. And actually then looking at the pictures with them gets a, a good discussion going and gets people sort of thinking about those, those visual and more sensory and embodied, I suppose, dimensions of existence than you might get if you just interviewed somebody or asked them to fill in a questionnaire or something like that. Realities is um, a node, as they call it, of the ESRC National Centre for Research Methods, and there are a range of nodes all around the country um, which are part of, of that centre. Um, we run a range of activities, so as well as uh, our research projects, we run a training capacity building programme. So we have uh, training workshops, day workshops, we also have um, shorter events, afternoon events, which are called Methods in Dialogue events, where we get um, people who research a similar topic from very different methodological perspectives together to talk about how they do that and, 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 those, and those are really 
uh, quite useful, I think. Um, we also have uh, a range of online resources on our Realities website. Um, so we have toolkits and working papers. We also have audio and video casts um, focused around particular methodological issues. Angela Dale and I have edited a book um, which draws together uh, different researchers who use uh, very different kinds of methods and methodologies, but who research in similar substantive kinds of areas. And it asks them to outline the kind of approach they've taken and what kind of knowledge their approach can actually generate. Manchester is a fantastic place to be. Um, we've got our Realities Centre, which is based here. Methods at Manchester is a great uh, initiative, which helps people find their way round all of the different kind of methodological specialisms and expertise that, that, we, that we have at Manchester. We have some really strong academic departments, lots of buzzy things going on, lots of events and excitement.